All right, for part two of this, um, we're gonna look at using something called the quadratic formula. So this is helpful when we can't factor, but it still works when we can factor. So down in part D here, this is the question that we had in the previous video that would not factor for us. But I'm saving that to do some simpler ones first with you. Now the quadratic formula is this formula that we have right here. And it is based on working with the equation in standard form. And our equation in standard form uh, is ax squared. So the coefficient in front of the x squared is the value of a plus bx. So the coefficient in front of the x is the b plus c equals zero. So again, we still have to have zero on one side before we can actually go ahead and use this equation. Uh, this equation is built on using a method called completing the square to rewrite this standard form into its vertex form and then using the isolation method to get the x by itself. So there's a whole way to develop how this formula came about, but we're not going to go through that in the scope of, of our time that we have together in the uh, scope of the course. So let's go ahead and use this quadratic formula here. All right, so looking at this first example here, we need to be able to identify our value of a, b, and c. So the coefficient of our x squared is the a, so a, is equal to 1. The coefficient of the x is b, so b is equal to negative 8, so you have to have your signs with these. And then there is no constant term here, so our c, our constant term value, is a 0. Now this one could easily be solved by factoring. We would end up with x equals 0 and x equals 8, and I believe this was an example that we actually did by factoring up above or in the previous video, but I'm going to show you that you can use your quadratic formula for this. So if I want to solve, I'm going to have x equals negative, and then the b, the b was negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b, which is negative 8, so I'm putting that in brackets because I have to square the negative, uh, b squared minus 4 times the value of a times the value of c, all divided by, so I'm going to make sure that divide line goes across the whole entire thing, all divided by 2a, so 2 times 1. All right, so now we've got negative negative 8, which becomes positive 8, plus or minus, and then I'm going to actually calculate what we have here in the under the square root sign. We had negative 8 squared, which would be 64, and then we're going to be subtracting a 0 because 4 times 1 times 0 is 0. So we end up with the square root of 64, and the square root of 64 is just 8, and then that's going to be divided by 2. So our two values of x then come from 8 plus 8. I should have left myself more room here. 8 plus 8 divided by 2. 8 plus 8 is 16, 16 divided by 2 is back to 8. So we get our one answer of x equals 8. Our other answer comes from x take away the 8. So it's this plus or minus thing that we have right here. Um, let me just undo what I just tried to do there. You guys aren't going to see that because it always blanks that out. So it's because of this plus or minus in here that we're getting our two answers, one with the plus and one with the minus right there. So hopefully that's making sense. If not, please send me a message and I'll try and clarify that for you. That gives us 8 take away 8 is 0, 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So we still get our two answers of 8 and 0 like we did in the previous one. A lot more work this time, so the factoring can be much more efficient. Okay, part B also we had done in our previous um, questions. Our a value is 1, our b value is negative 7, our c value is 10. We could have factored this, and we did in the previous uh, video, but you can still use quadratic formula. So if you're stuck with the factoring, the factoring is just not working for you, you can always use quadratic formula. It's just not the most efficient. All right, x equals negative b, which is negative 7, plus or minus the square root of b, which is negative 7 squared, minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. So that gives us positive 7, plus or minus. Uh, under the square root sign, I have a 49 minus 40, which becomes a 9, and then divided by 2. So our x will equal 7 plus 
the square root of 9, which is 3, divided by 2, or x will equal 7 minus the square root of 9, which is 3, divided by 2. That gives us 10 divided by 2, which is 5, so x equals 5. Here we have uh, 7 take away 3 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So those were the two answers we got by factoring. It's just a lengthier process when we use the quadratic formula here. All right, part C. Part C, again, I don't have the zero on one side for that question, so we are going to rearrange it first, get zero, and then we're ready to state our values of A. A is the coefficient of x squared, B is the coefficient of the x, C is the constant term, our x equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2a. Okay, oops, a is supposed to be 2. Um, so there is a little video I'm going to post to uh, our lesson as well, uh, which is a song that might help you remember how what the quadratic formula is. Um, I strongly recommend you listen to it just for entertainment purposes, if nothing else. Um, it does help people remember it though. All right, what we have here under the square root sign, one squared is one, and then we have uh, 12, 24, 1 plus 24 is 25, which will be a 5, divide by 4. So x will equal negative 1 plus 5, divided by 4. That's going to give us 4 divided by 4, that gives us x equals 1. Or x will equal negative 1 minus 5, divided by 4, which would be negative 6 over 4, which is negative three halves, and I believe those were our answers from the previous video. All right, so this one was one that we could not factor. We're gonna go ahead and use the quadratic formula here. Our a value is six. I do have the zero already here. Our b value is negative 25, and our c value is 14. So because this one does not factor, we would have to use the quadratic formula here. Our x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. All right, and yes, I just put this out on YouTube. It's quite embarrassing. All right, so we can figure out what we have underneath the square root sign. I'm going to need to use my calculator on this. 25 squared minus 4 times 6 times 14 equals, I got 289 under there. Which does work out to be a nice answer. I wonder if that one would have factored. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, so 25 plus or minus 17 over 12. So 17 plus 25 equals 42. 42 over 12 would reduce to 7 halves. So that's equal to 7 halves. And then, so that's one x value. So I did the plus one there. Um, I'm just running out of room, so I'm not showing all my steps. So this will be 25, take away 17, 25, take away 17, divided by 12, oh. and that gives me 8 over 12, which is the same as 2 thirds. Alrighty, so I have a couple more examples here for you to try. Um, so you can take some time and try those ones, put the video on pause, and then you can check your work with that. All right, so I have my solutions done now for the last two questions. Um, just make sure again that you have zero on one side of your equal sign before you state your A, B, and C, and then just go through the process of using that quadratic formula. I've taken my answers to two decimal places because they did not work out to be beautiful answers in terms of a whole number or a fraction. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Let me know if you need some help with anything and I'd be glad to help you.